brought to us, because she had been caught in a fire five days before. Hers was a really serious clinical manifestation, with first, second, third, and fourth degree burns on 90% of her body. Some bones were affected too. At first, and due to the fact that her medical outlook was very complex, we were well aware of the few possibilities of survival she had. Thank God we were able to see her through, but that implied being practically 24-7 with her, with different doctors collaborating, including burn specialists and plastic surgeons. All together, we were able to move forward but not before she had undergone really complex situations. The treatment of such a badly burned patient and particularly with the percentage of burns that Lala had on her body, made us think that hers was a lost case. In fact, it is well known that a human patient who has 40% of her body burned has very few chances of survival. As aforementioned, specialists pitched in. They were shocked by this case and contributed all of their expertise, and, true to fact, without their help, it would have been pretty difficult, if not impossible, to reverse the complications that kept showing up in the days that followed. As, just like with human burnt patients, only once the healing process is underway can one determine the true extent of the damage and what tissues are compromised. we had to face many, many problems. Foremost, regulating her body temperature, then getting her to eat, as she found it very difficult due to the paralysis of the nerves involved in grasping and chewing food. This, coupled with hemodynamic problems, Lala was anemic and had to receive more than one blood transfusion. Finally, with regards to her body, her wounds had to be seen to. Bear in mind that in some parts she had no skin at all. The day I received Lala, I really wondered, as a veterinarian, what we should do. When evaluating her as a patient, her injuries and the general situation led me to the sad conclusion that she had no chance of survival whatsoever. Worse, there was no way I could be working on her day in, day out. Still, I decided to let two days go by while she underwent supportive treatment to only then evaluate her situation and better determine what would be the correct course of action to follow. Lala arrived exhausted, decompensated, and with many, many injuries. She had already lost an eye, and with the remaining one, due to the burns she had received, she could not see too well. In spite of which, she could somehow make her way around. We placed a bespoke mask on her face for the first two days. She could see a bit and she managed pretty well in spite of her pain. Do remember that burnt patients need to have the wounds debrided, and though there were many that no longer hurt, it was uncomfortable for her just the same. Lala had to adapt to a new reality, arriving at an unknown place, continuously enduring the dressing of her wounds something that was carried out many times a day, to be absolutely in the dark for 48 hours due to the injury to her eye, 
to bear having her face covered with a mask and so on and so forth. A situation that was ever so stressful for her. Lana was taken to the park at night only to avoid sunburns on her body, a body that had practically no skin. These outings were particularly tough for her. She felt very insecure, as her good eye had to remain covered too. I recall how difficult it was to lead her out to the park, leaving her standing there on her own for a while to better evaluate her. That day I was with Marta, and I was telling her how serious Lala's condition was, and that I doubted she would make it. In fact, Lala wouldn't move any more, and she stood still like a rock. But, much to my surprise, at one point Lala came up to me from behind. I turned around, and when I saw her there, my first thoughts were that her moving on her own was a chance event. So I decided to move a few more yards away with Marta as we continued talking. To our surprise, I noticed that she was coming up to me yet again. So I asked Marta, what is going on with Lala? To test her, I started walking away, and as I walked, she simply followed me around. It was at that moment that I realized that, contrary to everything I had thought up to then as a veterinary doctor, Lala had opened herself totally to me, like a flower, and trusted me to be her only chance of survival. With this gesture, she moved me very deeply, and my sense of commitment increased tenfold. I would see her through, no matter what. It was this gesture that kick-started the strength and dogged determination I would need to face everything that came after. I definitely owed it to her. I absolutely believe that she spurred something at me, sparked the powerhouse for everything that was to come. The first stage of Lala's healing was really very difficult, because every day we would discover new areas where she was hurt. Although at first she let us work on her, cooperating by staying still, allowing us to dress her wounds, this was due to the fact that, because of the injuries she had suffered, she did not feel any pain in her body. As days went by, she evolved favorably, and as she began to feel a little better, she started to gain weight. And soon enough, we discovered a new Lala. She no longer stayed still as we worked on her, and complications ensued. Her true colors revealed themselves. Not only did she not allow herself to be cured, but sometimes she even tried to bite and kick us. Yes! She actually kicked us. No, definitely no, Lala. No, definitely no, Lala. No, definitely no, Lala. Lala's situation was unquestionably not normal, and she proved to have a fairly strong character. Complications followed. Picture this. Her head had many injuries, and we could not fit her with a muzzle for our safety, so we had to cure her without one. I was the one who had to deal with her wounds, but because we both have a strong character, the two of us became pretty much incompatible. So, from then on, uh, I left her most of the time in the capable hands of Flavia, who definitely has more patience than me, and who proceeded under my supervision. From that moment onward, they became a duo, and that was the key to the success of Lala's recovery. The treatment was very long indeed. 
It took a long time with permanent monitoring. Once I had to intervene personally as a veterinarian to carry out certain specific procedures, for all others, it was up to Flavia. The Flavia whom Lala trusted, and whom she allowed to do things I could only dream of doing. That bond, that friendship, shines to this day. I firmly believe Lala's case was a huge challenge for all of us at ACMA. It demanded top teamwork, both we among ourselves and us with her. It was a day-to-day -day struggle to make headway, as every day brought new veterinary challenges, with some issues which were unknown to us, because although we had gained valuable experience with Achilles, another horse had come to an NGO, this definitely was not the same. His case had been much more serious, so now there was a lot of uncertainty all the time about what was going to happen next. Lala's case had to be dealt with one day at a time, step by step. We all struggled, even during the wee hours when trying to lower her temperature with showers. Lala has a very strong character. I think that that was precisely what saved her. I, I always say that, with another horse, this very same case would not have seen the same positive outcome even if identical veterinary procedures were followed. A lot of herself went into making it. There is no other like her. Her recovery was due 50% to our effort. But Lala pitched in the other 50%. Lala, let the truth be said, is an example for us all. A fighter, a true warrior. She's an inspiration for us all. For me in particular, she, she's unique, a one of a kind. She taught us to continue fighting for her, and we also fought with her, as she did not allow herself to be cured, since obviously everything hurt. Add to that, that she found herself in an unknown place, that we were new in her life. Just think of that. We never said that because she was misbehaving we were going to cure her. The fact remains that we all shouldered her case and trudged forward. Fortunately, everything went well. And today, we have her here. Here, with us. Our reward is having her here today. It's just incredible to see her with us. I think she has marked us forever. All of us changed the life of us all for the better, and especially the NGO itself. There is definitely a before and an after Lala. She's a one of a kind, an inspiration for everyone. Today, Lala practically leads a normal life. She has a stable, she sleeps indoors at night, and during the day she goes out to the field with another horse named Iris, who is her mate, her adventure companion with whom she plays, enjoys the day, and graces in peace. She has shown us all that we should never give up, that nothing is truly lost. I am proud to have been the doctor who was in charge of her, and to have had her as my patient. She has taught me many lessons, both as a professional and as a man. She has taught us to work as a team, all together, even when things seemed irredeemably lost. And above all, please allow me to repeat myself, not to give up and fight it out till the end. I really don't have words to thank her enough as I enjoy every day that she gives us, when I see her free, playing, having fun, complaining. <laughs> well, in short, everything she does. Lala makes us fully understand what we have come to do for this cause of ours, and what a purpose in this world is.